One of the things that ZBrush has been best known for is adding fine details to models. Now, typically that's done using alphas. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about alphas and detailing. Here I've got the troll model open that I use for the poly painting demonstration. And so we can see the skin detail better, we're going to clear the poly paint. I'll do that by just selecting. Now make sure the head is the selected subtool and then go to. And that will clear the poly paint from the Z tool. Now we'll be able to see the skin details on the surface much, much easier. Now skin details like these fine wrinkle alphas that we have on the neck and around the mouth, these are created using alphas. And alphas we find here in the alpha palette. Alphas are just grayscale images that we use to change the shape of our brushes. We can also use them to generate geometry. We can use them as stencils. They have a variety of uses inside of ZBrush, but the main one is to change the shape of our brush. So these fine wrinkles, I used alpha 58, or excuse me, alpha 60 here, this uh, straight up and down wrinkle alpha. Now, if I take my brush, turn down my Z intensity, hold down the Alt key, you see that this actually creates this sort of crosshatch wrinkle texture. I'm gonna undo that and make sure that RGB is turned off when I do this because you can paint and sculpt at the same time. So there you go, you see that we're getting this wrinkle pattern. Now it's overstated, it's far too strong for what we want. So what I will do is, I'll just zoom into the side of the face here, turn my Z intensity down a bit more, and then I'll just lightly make this circular pattern with this particular alpha. And you see it gives us a very realistic crosshatch skin texture. Now alphas are going to change their behavior depending on the stroke type that you're using and the type of direction that you're sort of stroking the, the brush on the tablet. So that's all very important to keep in mind. If I turn my brush size up, turn my Z intensity up just a little bit, and instead of making circular patterns, if I just drag out here, holding down the Alt key, so I'm subtracting, I can get just radiating wrinkles coming out of the mouth here. Turn my draw size down, hold down the Alt key, and I can continue to radiate those wrinkles out from the mouth region. And I'll just circle them back over themselves and make a nice crisscross pattern here. And with all things, it's best to turn off your X symmetry once you get towards the center line because it'll be really apparent if you've got a symmetrical alpha selection that's sort of meeting at the center. It will create a very recognizable pattern. You can turn your X symmetry back off once you get away from the center line. So I'll turn my X symmetry back off here, back on here, and now I can go ahead and continue sculpting. Now I'm holding down the Alt key to subtract with this brush. If I let go of Alt and add instead, it will create these raised wrinkles like you see here, the sort of tissuey kind of skin. Now I'm using the standard brush. If I change to the clay tubes brush and then use the same alpha, I'm a big fan of this technique because what it does is it sort of builds into the recessed areas first. So it has a really nice kind of effect of skin stretching across from one high point to another. If we smooth that down a little bit, you can see it feels like skin stretching across that recessed region. I'll turn off my X symmetry and we'll do the same thing here. We'll turn our Z intensity down a little bit and just run that stroke across that recessed area. And then if we just put some smooth along there, holding down the shift key, you see it sort of stretches skin across those recesses. So it's a nice little technique that. Now we can also select alphas that we have here in this particular alpha palette. These are the default alphas that load with ZBrush. Or we can go to the light box and go to the alpha menu here. Now these alphas come with ZBrush. You can take any alphas from ZBrush Central or from the Pixelogic website or any number of uh, websites that sell ZBrush alphas or make your own and then store them in the ZBrush startup folder in the Z alphas folder and that will load them up into the light box here. These will come with ZBrush. So if I grab, for example, bumpyskin2.psd, if I just double click that, it will load it into the alpha palette here. Now let's change this to the standard brush and we'll go ahead and grab that bumpy skin alpha and we'll leave it on the dot stroke. I'll hold down the alt key and then if I click and drag, it sort of spatters this bumpy skin onto the surface. 
I'm going to go to my materials and turn down the wax modifier. It might make it a bit easier for you to see this. So you see this is a nice sort of pore texture. So I can spray that just like so. If I want sort of a, a, a tighter pattern, I'll undo that. And let's change to the spray stroke. Hold down the Alt key. Turn our draw size down. And then we can get a tighter sort of spray pattern for that skin texture as you see here. I'm just creating circular patterns with my pen to get a nice skin texture coverage here. We'll go into the ear here and we can put some uh, pore texture on the ears and break up that perfectly smooth kind of blend shader look that we've got. If I let go of the Alt key, that's going to add, so it'll create bumps instead. Now you might want something like that for goose flesh on the neck, for example, where you might get raised little pores or hair follicles. We can add that here in the neck. And that's just using that exact same alpha, but letting it Z add instead of Z subtract. Now we can also edit the alphas that we have to give us a different effect. If I change to, for example, alpha 59, Alpha 59, it's a bit difficult to see. Let's go to Alpha 57. There we go. It's these black lines on white. So if I draw, I get something that looks like this. If I were to go to Alpha, Invert, so it's white lines on black, if I hold down the Alt key now, I can get a similar effect, but it's just subtracting. So when I hold down the Alt key, it's sort of consistent with my other Alphas. Now, what I like to do when I'm detailing um, a creature or a character is I like to store a morph target to start with before I start detailing. And I'll show you why I do that. I'm just going to undo those strokes back here. I'll go to my highest subdivision level. Then I will go to Tool, Morph Target, and click Store Morph Target. Now, what that does is it stores a copy of the mesh in memory. So if I were to make a change to the model, like if I take the move brush, for example, and make a change like that, I can switch back to my stored copy by clicking switch. So that's all the morph target button does, is it stores a single copy of the mesh in memory. But what this means is if I go back to my brush, and then I start sculpting sort of like a wrinkle texture here, maybe I cover this whole area with this wrinkle texture. Then I can go to B for brush, M for morph, and there is a brush here called the morph brush, and this is really handy. I can dial back my Z intensity, turn off RGB, and then I can start to blend out that texture. I'm blending back in that stored morph target that did not have this texture on there. So this is really handy for sort of selectively changing the intensity of that sculpted texture along the surface of your model. Now you can also sculpt details into layers. If you watch the video on layers, we talk about using layers for sculptural detail as well as for poly paint. If I go back to my standard brush and then sculpt into this area again with some more skin texture like so, then go back to our morph brush, we can morph this back to its unaltered position. If I turn my RGB or Z intensity all the way up, I can effectively erase any skin texture that I might have put down after I stored that morph target. So morph targets are really useful for the detailing pass. Remember though, you can only store one morph target at a time. So I typically store a morph target before I go in and start adding fine details. I find it really handy to blend areas out and make sure that one area of detail transitions nicely into another. So let's take a look at another stroke that we can use. If I go back to the standard brush, go to the light box, and let's select bumpy skin uh, 13 here. We'll just double click that and then we'll change to the drag rectangle stroke. Now the drag rectangle stroke allows us to drag out a single instance of an alpha and then rotate it. So let's turn up the Z intensity so we can really see this. See, I'm dragging that out and then I can rotate that as I position it like this. So I don't want it to be quite that big or that strong. So I'll turn my Z intensity down and then just hold down the Alt key and I can stamp out, like texture stamp, this particular alpha on the surface. And this is very nice because skin texture has a directionality to it. For example, the pores on the nose tend to be round and, and, and large, whereas the pores along the nasal labial fold here tend to be more oblong and long and follow sort of the stretch of that particular area of skin. So I might drag these out and make these a little bit bigger 
or even select an entirely different alpha for this particular area. So that's an important thing to bear in mind when you're texturing your models is what type of skin texture does a particular area tend to hold. You can also change the direction of that, that flow so those pores are not just stamped on there all in the same direction. Now there's a variety of alphas that you can find online. You can find any sort of image that you want to use as an alpha. You can do that. I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can go online. You can go to places like um, the ArtStation Marketplace or Flip Normals, and you can buy alpha packs that other artists have created. You can get plenty of free alphas at ZBrush Central or at Pixelogic's website. The Download Center has a variety of alphas for download. So I'll turn on my X symmetry over here on the sides of the nose. And then we'll turn it off as we get towards the center. And just sort of build up some skin texture here. Maybe get it a little bit rougher. And I want to change the rotation as I draw these just so I don't create too much of a recognizable pattern between all those different pores in that particular area. And if I want to change the intensity of it, remember I did have a morph target stored, so I can go to my morph brush, turn down my Z intensity, and I can blend this back if I want to. I can undo that to bring the texture back. Maybe turn that down even further, and it's a little bit more subtle. Go back to our standard brush, and then we can texture again on top of that. Now, if there were an image that I wanted to use as an alpha, I could do that just by grabbing that image and loading it into ZBrush. We'll need the alpha menu to do this. I'll tear off the alpha menu on the side of the screen here. Now, here you see that we have an import button. So I can import any image into the alpha menu and manipulate that to use it as an alpha. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an image of a skin texture now. So here I have an image of some elephant skin. So if I were to load this by going to import, double clicking the elephant skin, it will load this into the alpha menu. Here you see it's loaded in now. If I go to modify, I can change the parameters of this alpha so it's more suitable to use as a brush tool. So if I were to click and drag right now, it's just, you know, it's, it's okay. It's creating a nice sort of alpha texture, but you see that it's got these hard edges. You can see the edges of the, the alpha effect. If we go to the top of the head, it'll be a bit easier to see. So if I click and drag this out now, you see we, we get the edges of the alpha, and we don't want that. So I'm going to undo. So the first thing I'll do is I will maximize the range by turning on max, and I will anti-alias the alpha. There is a slider here for RF that's radial fade. If I turn that up, I get a radial fade, sort of a blur around the perimeter of the alpha. So now if I click and drag, you see the effect that we get there. But it's a little clipped. I still don't like the effect that I'm getting, so I'm going to undo that. Let's turn off maximize range, and we will go ahead and give a little bit of blur to the alpha now. So now, if I click and drag, that improves the, the aliasing that we were getting down in the, the nooks and crannies of that particular alpha. If I undo that, I can turn up my radial fade. You see that gives me more of a vignette around there. You could introduce noise to this if you wanted to. Uh, you know, that's in some cases that's desirable, but not in this case. We're actually trying to circumvent the noise. You could also tile it in the horizontal and vertical directions. We can also change the intensity and the contrast, and we can use this curve to adjust the alpha as well. If I were to drag down this point here, you can see that it basically changes the value range of the alpha. I can get quite creative with it, make it very, very bright at the center, and then fall off to the edges if I wanted to. I'm going to undo that change, and then we'll just click drag, and now you see we've got this nice texture stamp here that we can click drag out to create a skin texture. Now I'm going to smooth this back down. If I were to increase my blur on this, 
Now, this is a post or a pre process, by the way. So, the alpha we see here is running through these filters before it's applied to the mesh. Here you go. You see that that softens that aliasing quite a bit. Now, the higher quality your source image, the better it's going to be for your, for your alpha. You're going to get a better effect. If I want to sort of bake all these changes into this alpha, what I need to do is go to transfer, make modified alpha. And now this alpha has those changes baked into it. Uh, whereas before it was still using this alpha and just sort of running it through kind of a mixer under the modifier. Now it's actually baked in to this alpha. So I could save this with a brush or save it out separately. And that would be an alpha that I could carry on using with all of those settings as part of the alpha instead of having to reset them every time I loaded it up. I could change this to the dot stroke, for example, or the freehand stroke. And I could go ahead and apply this. Let's actually, I tell you what we'll do. We'll go to alpha and I'm going to invert it so it's black on white. You can see the effect that this gives us now. Let's go back to drag rectangle. That gives us a raised effect here, you see. This is raised wrinkles. If I hold down the Alt key, now they push in. I'll go back to Alpha and invert that again. So any image that you can find online of a skin texture or any type of texture, could be a cloth, it could be tileable, it could be anything at all that you want to create an alpha from, just load it into the alpha menu. If you have something in the texture menu that you want to create an alpha from, there's actually um, a button here. You can go to make alpha and that will convert that into an alpha. Now alphas have a tendency to be if we go to this one here, 16-bit depth, whereas textures are 8-bit depth. So that's something to keep in mind. Alphas don't need to be very, very high resolution to use as brush tips. Uh, for texture stamps, I like mine to be relatively high resolution because I just like to make sure that I can reduce the amount of noise in them. If you were to create your own alphas by sculpting them directly, uh, I usually like to capture my alphas at a higher resolution. You can capture alphas by sculpting onto a polygon plane, which we'll look at, or you can also capture alphas using the extractor brushes, which we look at in a separate chapter, specifically on the extractor brushes. So let's say I wanted to sculpt a custom alpha. I'll go to the light box and I'll go to the tool menu and I will go to, let's say, actually let's go to the project menu. Go to miscellaneous. And I'll just grab a brush 3D template polygroup and say, no, we're not going to save changes. We're just going to open up a new project here. Now, we use this plane also in our chapter on vector displacement brushes. What we can do here is if we turn off frame mode, go to geometry. Let's close out of the alpha menu here. Go to tool. And under tool, let's go to UV map and morph UV. You see that this actually has planar UVs on there. That's important because we want to use those UVs to extract an alpha from this. So what I can do, I will go ahead and go to Morph Target, Store Morph Target. I'll divide this. Well, actually it already has subdivision stored. So let's go to the lowest subdivision level. We'll store our Morph Target. Then we'll step up. And I can just start sculpting a texture on here. Let's say, for example, I want an alpha of maybe a bullet hole. So I'll take my standard brush, hold down the Alt key. Let's reset our current brush. I'm going to go to brush, reset current brush. So let's make a bullet hole here. I actually did this exact same technique on one of the Iron Man films when I was at uh, Weta and they needed to get some alphas to use in the texture painting department to make bullet holes. I just sculpted some bullet holes in, that were used as sort of uh, alphas to make holes in metal. So we'll just make, take the damn standard brush. We'll turn off X symmetry. Maybe I want some sort of fractures here. Hold down the Alt key, get a little bit of a pinch along there. Maybe this is not in metal, but it's sort of a wound in, in skin create some detail down in there. 
sort of make these edges a little bit more raggedy. Maybe it's a, a stab wound or maybe it's a bit of rot on a zombie. It could be anything. I'm going to add another subdivision, or I'm going to step up a subdivision level so I get better detail here. And we're just directly sculpting onto this, making both positive and negative changes to the surface. Let's build up a little bit of detail here. Now keep in mind with an alpha, it's not like a vector displacement brush. You can't, you can't have things that sort of overhang over, over a 90 degree angle. You can't have one thing curve over another. In those cases, you'd want that to be a vector displacement brush. So let's say we've got a shape like this, for example. And we could even put other alphas in here. If I go to the standard brush, spray stroke, and go to our alphas and maybe grab the bumpy skin alpha again, we can actually add an alpha into an alpha. If I want there to be skin texture on here, I could put skin texture around. So we're going to create an alpha using the alpha from mesh tool by going to alpha and click from mesh. This shows me the alpha and our resolution. We'll and click OK. Now that generates an alpha for me there. So if I go to lightbox tool and we grab a polysphere, We'll divide this polysphere a few times so we've got enough geometry to show the detail that we just sculpted. And I'll go to the drag rectangle stroke, click and drag. That's going to kind of give me a muted version of my brush. If I undo that, turn up my Z intensity, click and drag again. Now you see it gives me the actual details that I just sculpted. So we're able to capture that alpha. So let's say that we want to save alphas out so we have them to access anytime we want. Well, let's take a look at how to do that now. So here you can see we have a Z tool with multiple subtools. Each subtool is a separate polyplane upon which I have sculpted a variety of different textures. Now, if I wanted to create a single brush which contained all of these alphas, I would simply go to the standard brush, go to brush, and then under create, we have the option to create multi alpha brush. If I click that, it will create a brush that has each one of those alphas stored in it. So if we go back to our polysphere, let's go to lightbox tool, open a polysphere. We'll divide this polysphere a few more times so we have enough geometry to capture the detail of those alphas. Now I can select whatever alpha I want from here. So I'll grab this, this cut, go to the drag rectangle stroke, <clears throat> click and drag and you see that once again it's not quite as as intense as we want it to be that's because the default intensity is 25 if we turn that up to 100 we get the full intensity of our alpha let's switch to another one we'll go to this sort of um, burn damage here we can drag that out and we can also overlay it on top of itself and sort of build up the effect if we move over to a clear side here we can grab this poor texture alpha or this wrinkle alpha and drag this wrinkle alpha out and cross hatch that now of course I can change my stroke I can go to a freehand stroke and then if I click drag this you can see that we can create a nice cross hatched kind of skin texture just out of that very very simple cross hatched wrinkle alpha if I turn my draw size up we can change the scale of that Here we've got a poor texture alpha. We'll go to an untouched part of the sphere. And if I drag this out in a circular pattern, I can create a poor texture. Now this is perhaps the easiest way to save out alphas. These are all stored with this brush. So if I go to brush, save as, I can save this brush as um, a skin texture alpha brush. Bring it over here, I'll just save this. And you'll be able to load that brush in by going to the brush menu, load brush, and I stored that and we'll make it available for you with the downloads for this course. Now that's storing alphas, 3D alphas, in a brush. Now what about alphas that we extract from an image? Say, for example, the um, elephant skin alpha that we created here. So if I take this alpha and I want to save this out, what I would do is I would go to alpha, 
export. Now, we can export processed alpha or export the alpha itself. Export processed alpha is the same as make modified alpha. Down here, the make modified alpha button. Remember when we pressed that when we had the alpha, the original image selected, that processed the alpha. If I had not made a processed alpha, then I would just click this button under alpha export, and then that would process it before it saved it. So I would click export, and then I could save that alpha much the same way. So I would save this as elephant skin, and it will save by default as a PSD. Now you can save those anywhere on disk and then load them up manually by going to alpha import and then you can import that alpha back in. So there's my elephant skin alpha and they can import it in. Now if you wanted to save them in the light box so they were always available, what you would do is go to alpha export. And this time we would go to our applications menu and I'm going to go to the ZBrush 2021 folder here. And then we go to Z Startup, or excuse me, Z Alphas. And inside of Z Alphas, we have a selection of alphas here. So if I create a new folder, and we just call this, um, I, I make all of my custom things MM for Maddie Monster, so it'll be Maddie Monster Alphas. I've got a new folder there, and I will save this as elephantskin.psd. So I've now saved that in that folder. So that brush doesn't, that alpha does not load every time ZBrush starts, but every time I go to my light box and then go to the alpha menu, you see that I will have MM alphas. And if I open that folder, I can access the alphas that I've stored there. So if I double click that, it will load that up as a brush alpha. So this is a really nice way to organize your alphas here in the light box and always have them available. Now you don't have to store your alphas in that light box Z alphas folder. You could put a shortcut in that folder, which then points to another location where you store your alphas. Maybe you've got lots and lots of them and you don't want them on your, your ZBrush disk where the ZBrush is installed. You could have them elsewhere and as long as there's a shortcut in here, you could then double click that shortcut and it would take you to that folder. So alphas are, you know, much like making your own custom brushes. You can find that very, very quickly you can build up a variety of custom alphas and custom brushes to accentuate your own workflow. So I hope you found this video helpful. It's very exciting to sort of utilize alphas and alpha detailing to add that extra bit of finesse to your sculptures. I always tell my students in my Nomen classes, though, don't underestimate how important it is to sculpt your primary and secondary forms. All the detail in the world won't make your sculpture better if your primary and secondary forms are not resolved. So something that I see a lot of beginners do is they jump right into alpha detailing. Be careful with that. Make sure that you have done your primary and secondary form sculpting as much as you can before you start putting details down because a good sculpture will be good even if you don't have any fine detail on it. But a not so strong sculpture will never be made better by adding fine details. So that concludes this look at alphas and detailing ZBrush. I hope you found this useful and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.